Get our black claps on. Uh, my brother, a special, special episode, man. You ready? <laughs> why, why? All the work on his birthday. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why does Farouk look like the one that flew all night? What's wrong? <laughs> you having a, a bad start to your week, bro? Yeah, bro? I'm tight, man. Oh, man. Um, well, welcome back to This Week in White Supremacy. We have a very, very special, special episode today. Mm-hmm. But we'll start with our introductions before we, we introduce our special guest. I'm Jasiri X. I'm co-founder and CEO of One Hood Media. And not to my immediate right this time. Like, right across from Right me. across hey. from me is... It's a miracle. It's me. Straight off of the plantation. That's a miracle, brother. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> Straight <laughs> off the plantation. And got papers. We'll talk oh, later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the plantation. It's, it's okay. Wow. It's okay. But I'm here making it with joy. Absolutely. Let's get it. And you're right next to uh, see that yeah, to calm saying. you, right? <laughs> because, you know, last episode, it got a little tense, right? Yes. So we had to sit you next to, you know, our kind of one hood therapist in, um, in session. You know what I'm saying? Trouble the next level shaman. <laughs> the um, next level shaman. Oh, I like that. You know what I'm that. saying? Uh, never like supremacy. Absolutely. You know what it is. All right. And, um,. <laughs> The annoyed, what are you? <laughs> Infinitely infuriating. <laughs> Perpetually perplexed. Yes, yes, yes. Man. You, you know, when you are like, I mean, you wear that annoyance man, on your bro. face, bro. Listen. Strongly. I don't hide it, man. Yes, Listen, yes, I'm yes. a Virgo. We got Virgo uh, retrograde right now. 100%. Man. I'm fucking mm. tight about everything. <laughs> the queen died. This nigga didn't get me off. I'm supposed to be. Oh, you're supposed to be mourning? Listen, both my countries are in a state of mourning right now, and this nigga got me walking on a fucking Tuesday. Yes, yes, yes. yes. (laughs) But we're here. Because and it's his birthday a, week. And it's my fucking oh, birthday. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're adults. Do we, say, do we do birthday week, birthday month? We're adults now. I haven't taken off my birthday. We have responsibilities. In 10, 15 years. I've been telling yeah. everybody that our black led organization gives people their birthdays. They, off. We do, yeah. And he, he no, has a, that's, that's a he has a choice. That's a false. He decided to it's work like, on his birthday. No. He wanted to drop an album on his birthday. That's work. No. Listen, the the, the choices the choices here be like. Yo, you could do this, but do you want to? <laughs> Are you sure you want to take? You off? sure you want to do that? You sure you want? To? I said we can handle it, brother. But it's up to you. I mean, you know. See that? See see how he does that? If you would like see to leave, if you, I'm would leaving like after to this. Leave. I'm a, yeah. I might leave in the middle so, of this. So Les is the one that be like, no, you cannot come to work. I'll be like, ah, oh, come on. Um, so we have a a very 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 special guest, um, with us today, um, Doctor Uju Anya. Um, and she is a professor at Carnegie Mellon University in applied linguistics. Yeah. Um, and so welcome. You are our first yes. in get studio. Get the, get the, get the, the yeah. claps again, brother. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Since we've transitioned to in person, you are our very first guest. And, um, I have a million questions for you. Um, and I actually, you know, I'm sure everybody has, um, questions. Um, so I would like to start with what went down <laughs> and then like work our way backwards. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we, you, we should learn context first. Yes. Yes. The what context you, was, I mean, you, you started it. Right? I mean, I'm just uh, saying you were the one already started. <laughs> the so queen. Like, the so, queen okay. Died. Okay. 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 So listen, so listen, yes, so break listen. it down for us. He's in mourning. Let, yes. Let's review yes. it. <laughs> God save us. No, <laughs> no, absolutely tomato, not. Tomato, tomato, tomato. Boo. No, listen. No, 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 no. no. So uh, the queen died, right? Yes. And um, I, in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in uh, Jesus Christ, bro, I can't even speak today. I, a lot. Uh, 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 <laughs> All right, so okay, the queen. Let me help. Let me help queen, my brother. The queen passed. It's Murphy retrograde, bro. The, 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 queen, the queen passed. And, you know, there was mixed reaction, right? Yeah, I had mixed reactions to the queen dying. And by mixed reactions, I mean I celebrated. Yeah, well, what's I mean, your background? Because people might not yeah, yeah, people people know. Yeah. Canadian English. Okay. And your mom's from? Lebanon. Right. Yeah. So there were individuals that, of course, you know, the news stopped 
wall to wall clean yeah, coverage. Yeah, yeah. But there were other individuals, particularly those people who were directly impacted by who were colonized, who were you know subjugated by the crown. Right, right. All right. black and brown people around the world. Right, Ter- like terrorized. Like we Ter- have, absolutely. The reason we yeah. all speak English is because of the crown. Right. We we have a. Um, a, a person in, in one hood that's Kenyan, right? Right, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, our, our brother Vic, and he had a a very long, detailed post. Um, and it was stuff that I didn't know, that I learned, yeah. a, a particularly about um, what happened in Kenya that I did not know. Um, and so, but I, I know you got on African and Indian jewelry. I know that's not yours, you right. know what I'm saying, queen? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, um, Dr. Anya, you got on the Bird app, Oh my goodness! That, that <laughs> app. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I admit. <laughs> and so you just, you know, well, she did hadn't you did died. you? Okay, she hadn't died. Okay, so she had not yet died. Right. And um, you know, I wake up in the morning. I'm I get my children off to school. Right. Um, and I'm still sort of in bedish and trying to move in my day. Come a little closer to the mic, please. And oh, I'm okay. um. I'm looking through the news, and the BBC was reporting that she was in some sort of critical state right. with imminent death. Right. And I uh, had an emotional reaction. Absolutely. Um, and had an emotional outburst. Yeah. Um, I was triggered by this news. Absolutely. Uh, it went in deep places of pain and trauma for mm. me uh, due to my family's experience with the rule of this monarch and I went on the bird app (laughs) and I shared my feelings in an emotional outburst that was not planned it was very spontaneous but it was extremely real yeah yeah and I think like real like you know it was it was a lot of real reaction to uh, from particularly communities and people who were terrorized uh, uh, by British rule. Um, and um, to me, you know, how do you, I mean, it, it started this whole conversation, but so did you like walk away and come back? Like at what point when you tweeted it out that then all like, Obviously, then everybody starts with like, were you watching this in real time or did you kind of like set your phone down, do some running around, come back and look and was like, oh, my God, what did I tweet? Or Well, I was going to teach my seminar. I okay. have a three hour seminar on Thursday. Wow. And um, I was also prepping for that. So this is sort of my morning, you know, getting into my day, Absolutely. looking at email, looking at Twitter, you know, doing all kinds of things. Um, so I, I put the tweet out. Um, and it was already sort of getting reactions by kind of the usual suspects. I have my interlocutors on Twitter, you know, people I talk to regularly or people who come at me regularly. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I engaged with the tweet for a little bit. I didn't just kind of put it out there and go because then people started to immediately attack. Right. Um, because it was something that uh, some perceived as um, outrageous for me to have said. Um and I engaged in some back and forth and responding to some people that were saying this and then other people that were saying uh, other things. So it was uh, a bunch of exchanges that I had underneath that tweet. And then um, it was time to you know, log off and go mind the business that pays me. So I went to prep for class and eventually go teach my class and you know, turned off my phone and went out. For three hours. And then when I came back (laughs) was when I saw (laughs) that the world had exploded. Yes. Yeah. So like it like like and I saw Bezos. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, So you're at that point when you like go, I guess, on on Twitter and your notifications are like off the charts. and And you see, you know, we're talking about Jeff Bezos, right? We're talking about. Arguably the wealthiest man in the world now, um, really, because then he has a following, right? Yeah. So um, what I saw first was sort of the responses to the immediate tweet. Right. Um, and then I, you know, I, I 
made the second tweet, which was a follow up to that, saying Absolutely. that I, I, if anyone was expecting me to do anything other than or say anything other than what I did, yes, then they could just keep wishing can, upon can, a star. Can, can I can I read that? Please do. Um, because this was when I this was when I jumped in with my retweet. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I was like, oh yeah, this is the energy <laughs> I'm feeling. Uh, if anyone expects me to express anything but disdain for the monarch who supervised a government that sponsored the genocide that massacred and displaced half my family and the consequences of which those alive today are still trying to overcome, you can keep wishing upon a star. Yeah. Mm. In other words, I said what I fucking said. Right, mm. right, 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 right. <laughs> Straight like that. Come on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. See, I want to, because you are a professor, a doctor, an expert um, in language and language learning, I've always said that we do not have the language or the education to really process a lot of issues, especially when it's the people who have been hurt, oppressed, and yeah. harmed, um, have the mic. And so when you're going and you're talking, I mean, you didn't say anything, in my opinion, problematic. I, the way I talk about people who have harmed me, you you are a saint <laughs> for a comparison. Um, and so when you're seeing all this visceral reaction, is a part of it, like, this is why you're mad? Well, uh, m- I don't know. You, you should know sort of my backstory on mm-hmm. Twitter. This ain't my first dragging. Correct. Like, I get regularly, you know, attacked on Twitter. Um, this is sort of the, the existence of a loud black woman mm. on Twitter. Unapologetic, feminist, left-leaning. Mm. So I get it from sort of multiple corners right so it's not i mean i was surprised at the scale because this had already flown much further than anything i had ever encountered but it wasn't that different it wasn't your experience. first rodeo it was like, not <laughs> my first rodeo like i've been down this before this is this is twitter for me absolutely it, regularly i remember my worst dragon well till this one was you know when i said that uh Squid Games was racist. That was a dragging across like oh, wow. <laughs> continents <laughs> in 40 languages, you know? Uh, I said the portrayal of the Pakistani immigrant, uh, the way uh, that they had him sort of growling, deferent. And I still this, haven't seen Squid Game yet. Yeah. The storyline, things yeah. like that. So you know, that was, it, it wasn't d- abnormal for me. You just kind of. Blew my mind, you know, until you said it. Didn't realize who she was. <laughs> no, I, I'm saying like the show, because it like that's that would, you know, if this was if Sweet Games was like white people, that would be the black guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of that, you know, um, archetype of like the mystical protector black person that looks out for like yeah. the star white person. And until you just said it, I never thought of it. Like that. No, that's yeah. that's now powerful I analysis. About he the was. Wire. He played. The- <laughs> <laughs> Don't start there. <miracles. laughs> I brought some parallels right. because every engagement I have on Twitter, no matter how you know messy or off the chain or just foolish shenanigans, tomfoolery, mm-hmm. I like to teach. I am fundamentally a teacher, mm. and I bring evidence and support for the claims that I make. So I gave examples that he in that show. The cultural parallel to what I was familiar with was the noble savage. Right. And, you know, Uncle Tom. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I went into that and I, I didn't, of course, I didn't want to, you know, say that it was exactly like the Korean context. Right. But I just wanted to draw some parallels and make some comparisons. Mm. And, you know, anyhow, just yeah, to yeah, say yeah, yeah, that yeah. that was the worst. And I think the second worst was the last time I talked about the royal family when I called Prince Harry a jobless clown. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, even the royal gun, family echoes smiles because everybody <laughs> know Harry don't look like Charles. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Huh? Who said that? You said that? Oh wow! Okay, I mean, was that bars from the new album? Harry don't look like Charles, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Listen, don't talk if about you know, Megan's husband. Like if you know, that. you know. Listen, if you know, I you know. know that he is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. Right, right, but right, I was right. just talking about the fact that I I didn't see sort of any discernible career or a source of income or you know he he was a 
living in his grandmother's house. <laughs> and <laughs> she's you know, not wrong. Was, she's not, she's wrong. not wrong. Marrying, you know, up was what I said. Because wow. Megan came yes. fully formed with a career, with a life, with a history, uh, and, you know, sort of brought him up. <laughs> and that's what I said. And I was ripped a brand new asshole for that one. Wow. Mm. And okay, that's Twitter. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just mute and move. And so this is kind of the backdrop. But then when I saw Bezos' tweet, mm. I knew this, this shit was different. Right. Mm. And I'm like, okay. And I thought to myself, but why? You know, because I had already seen all the reactions, you know. The Irish were river dancing across the, right. the internet. Which Another one bites the dust. You yeah. Know? yeah, that's yeah. a discourse Play- that we've yet to have. Playing yeah. music, they were. They uh, did the chant at know, the stadium. At the football stadium. Right, right, right. He's in a box. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's, I mean, I didn't know any of this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, half the planet was overjoyed. Absolutely. And, and I, had, I had said something about this on social media. I had said the entire world, the longest reigning symbol of imperialism, oppression, racism, genocide, and theft is dead. White people, how dare you mock the majesty? <laughs> you know, so I, I was wondering why me when there were so many people, white people, mm-hmm. who were saying much worse things, much more violent. I, I, I never wished her death. She was already on that path. <laughs> I never <laughs> said anyone Semantics. should kill her. Semantics. Right, right, right. All I said was that may she suffer in the way that millions of people millions. have suffered at her hand. Right. Mm. That is what I said. And Bezos and his dusty ass <laughs> yes. comes at me and literally puts a target on my back. Right. He didn't criticize my words. He criticized me. Right. He said that I was not contributing anything to make the world better. And, of course, he would be the expert <laughs> in those who improve the world and do good and are, you know, a boon for humanity. Right, right, right. So, ah, me? Yeah. You, <laughs> I, I came back. And I said to him exactly what I thought of him. First of all, I cursed him in my father's language mm. to begin. Mm. And secondly... I reminded him that he was a colonizer like that queen. A hundred percent. Yes. And that the millions of people that he has harmed in this world, including his employees. A hundred percent. Yeah. Will remember him just as fondly as I do my colonizers. Wow. Mm. And he didn't, he didn't quote tweet that one. Huh? No. <laughs> he didn't. Yeah. He stepped off his phone on that and, one. And funny enough... <laughs> Twitter detective agency is a, a, a brilliant thing right. you know, because I didn't even have that on my mind. But apparently, like within the hour or something, somebody linked it to the fact that previously, because people were asking the big question, why her? Why her? Right, right, right. What in the world would Jeff Bezos know about Ujwanya? Like, how in the world would Ujwanya enter into the eye of Jeff Bezos? Right. And, you know, Twitter detective agency pulled up a tweet that I had made a couple weeks back yeah. at Netroots Nation. Yes. Where I met Chris Smalls and I took a picture with him. I was overjoyed. I was elated. Yeah. I find him to be a remarkable young man. And he has achieved what was seemingly impossible, unionizing a whole Amazon warehouse. Absolutely, yeah. And I tweeted my joy at having met such an extraordinarily powerful and brilliant black man. And I put the picture, went about my business. That was like weeks ago. But then Twitter <laughs> detective agency <laughs> raised that up and said, ah, here is, we go. Right. Why he chose you. This right. is how I entered that man's eye. Yeah. Mm. And not in a good way. Right. So I do not presume that Jeff Bezos knew my name or that I existed. However, he pays people. To track Chris Malls and his activities and the activities of the Amazon Labor Union. And I definitely pinged on that, their radar 
with that tweet and that picture and right. the praise for the man and his work. Right. And so absolutely 100%, Jeff Bezos and his small petty ass came at me, <laughs> exposed me to threats, to danger. True. Put a big old target on my back for mm-hmm. his 5 million <laughs> followers. Right. And if you can think of like the influence he has, a single tweet of his would have millions of impressions. 100%. I mean, his influence is Outworldly. Right. And he put my tweet there right. with my words, my picture, in the middle of a storm already brewing against me. Right. Mm. And he told the world, I ain't shit. Yeah. Let me tell you, my inbox, within like five minutes, 500 emails, just mm. like that, I had to disable the contact me button on my website. Wow. Because people were coming in there calling me everything. I'm sure. You know, but my given name. I don't open any of those emails, but they put it already in the subject line. Mm. <laughs> nigger, 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 nigger. Right, right, right. Cunt, bitch. Yeah. Genetically inferior. I mean, I heard all kinds of things, you know? It's just like, eh? Jeff Bezos did that. Yeah. So did, didn't you have a song about that? I did yes. do a song called Rob Jeff Bezos. I don't know if you ever heard <laughs> the song, but uh And, th- and th- didn't you say something about some uh some people in Nigeria too? Yeah, yeah, I actually um Could you give us the ball? Wow, please? wow, damn, this is kind of a full circle <laughs> moment. Um I say looking out the window uh with the Draco fully loaded, planning how to rob Jeff Bezos. How much is one trillion when converted into pesos? Turn half into naira. I got family in Lagos. And the, this is artistic expression. Of course, is, yeah, it's art. Artistic. It's art. Listen, I'm not trying I to be recoded. Yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. But, no, no. That, was no that was I, I put that out in 2020 in the midst of I, I I wanted a song to kind of encapsulate all I was seeing at that moment. Yeah, you know, particularly following the deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and to me, one of the things that hadn't been talked about and still isn't talked about enough to me is the transfer of wealth that we saw happen Mm -hmm. during this pandemic where individuals like Jeff Bezos, I saw an article that said um, that, you know, Amazon and Jeff Bezos made so much money during the pandemic that he could give every single employee a hundred thousand dollars and have as much money as he had pre pandemic. So it's, it's fascinating, um, you know, because it, then it, it kind of, brought this conversation like you know and 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 one of the things that i i loved about it um and and hope that like did you because you saw uh, obviously you know like you said here's jeff bezos who targets you yeah um uh, um for for a, a lot of these reasons um including you know um you're 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 bigging up uh, uh, chris smalls and then all of these white supremacists racist Absolutely. kind of come out of the woodwork but then you also had um particularly black women on twitter like really rally behind you and then they start to take on because i seen somebody say like uh jeff when you we already got the party planned for when it was your time i mean we're gonna we gonna celebrate for a week so i kind (laughs) of saw so did you also see that and like so at that point they had cut me off of twitter Oh, really? Yeah. My suspension. Oh, um, so you were suspended for that tweet? Yeah. Not wow. the tweet against um, Bezos, the one right. uh, about talking it. about the queen. Right. Yeah. So, first of all, I do not have any intention to rob or support Robin Jeff Bezos. Uh, me neither. That's a song. You know, this, yeah, of course, yeah, this is <laughs> artistic expression <laughs> artistic that expression. I'm listening that to. That was just Siri X, if y'all are. And respect the jokes. Back. Hashtag respect <laughs> the jokes. <laughs> and I also. I don't deny Jeff Bezos money, right? right? He owns a business. 100%. He should earn from his business. Absolutely. Right? Also, the people that work for Jeff Bezos, I don't want them to lose their jobs either. 100%. He's supporting the livelihood, you know, of a million employees or yes. et cetera. Right? right. We'd like them to what? have breaks. Exactly. And be able, and be able to, to pee. Right. And be yes. able to have a livable wage. Exactly. But like you said, we're not trying to take no. down Amazon. No. If I, you know, if we're trying oh, to take miracle? down Amazon, <laughs> well, miracle said that. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying that you know I am not here right. to you know take the the food out of the mouths of people who work for Jeff Bezos. Absolutely, I am like Chris Smalls and other people, just asking that they be treated better. 
Yes. And their mm-hmm. rights as workers be respected. Yes. So, you know, that. And, okay, uh, the timeline continues. So after that, um, so you get suspended, like, what, do you, does Twitter send, like, an email, like, saying, like, you've been suspended or your account's been suspended, or you just go to log on and you can't? I just can't. Okay, got you. Um, and what it says to me is that uh, this tweet has been flagged for uh, being uh, inciting violence and being abusive and uh, targeting, uh, targeted harassment. That's what the notification said to me. Mm-hmm. And then it said that, uh, do you want to delete it or do you want to appeal? And I said, appeal. And I wrote down, you know, my reasons for not wanting to delete it because I did not agree that I was inciting violence, nor was I engaging in targeted harassment. Right, right. Um, but then while they're processing your appeal, you're locked out of the system. So you can't get on. Mm. So it, you know, so... The aftermath, when um, black women started to ride for me and uh, start to get attacked themselves, and I didn't see that because that early I was already out. Right. And I was out for almost a week after. So everything I saw happening on Twitter was secondhand through my partner, Dr. Siri Alang. And she was the one kind of reporting to me what was going on. And, you know, and of course, at this time, I had already had calls from, you know, my um, administrators and, and things like that, uh, saying that uh, there there would be a response. They didn't tell me what the response would be, but definitely this has come to the point that they've seen it and they're going to have to respond to it. And I right. said, and I also, you know, at that point explained to them, my perspective and where I came from and uh, what the, the British monarch had done uh, and what she represented and what I was, uh, the, the truth I was telling and how I was speaking from not just my pain, but the collective pain of my family and Absolutely. my broader Igbo people. So, um, you know, I told that to them and then they said, okay. And, and that was it. Uh, whatever else I heard from them was when I was hearing it on the news along with everybody else or Absolutely. when I saw the statement being uh, released, et cetera. Absolutely. And um, there, so uh, I had two more questions and I want to open it up. Um, has this experience changed the way, because like you said, you kind of go in, you use Twitter, um, you, you kind of almost like prepare <laughs> you know, yeah. like you said, to teach when you go in there. Has this experience um, changed the way you're looking at engaging in social media or do you intend to continue to engage in the way you have? So even in this, my most intense moment on social media, fundamentally, more than I am anything else in this world, more than I am a mother, more than I am a researcher, more than I am a sister, a community member, I am a teacher. And if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to teach. Right. And even in that very intense moment of profound pain and my outburst, my emotional outburst of deep, deep pain, I was teaching. I followed up explaining that there was a genocide against the Biafra people. Right. The, the who were trying, you know, the Igbo people who were trying to form an independent nation of Biafra. They wanted to be separate from the country that the British Empire had imposed on us, which was this country of Nigeria, where they kind of just kind of took a bunch of independent nations who don't have anything to do with each other, don't even speak each other's language, don't relate. Many of them were even enemies and warring at the time, smushed them all together and drew these arbitrary lines around them mm-hmm. and called them countries and named those countries. Right. And then said, now y'all get along and do a country for us and be a, a union for us. And then go through you know contentious, bloody independence processes that never really yield any real independence. You're still part of a commonwealth afterwards. True. And you have the eternal meddling in your affairs and the eternal extraction of your resources and the eternal fomenting of divisiveness and infighting 
in order to be able to control you. This is what an oppressor does, a colonizer does. Uh, this is these are you know tactics and strategies of dominance. Right. We were subjected to that as a larger unit of Nigeria. And then when the Igbo people said, we want our own thing, let's, let's go in and do that. Well, it so happened to be that the territory that this new country of Biafra was going to be in included very, very rich oil reserves. Mm. And the British were not going to let go of that. Wow. And the people that they had put in power you know, the, their puppet Nigerian governments weren't going to do that either because they needed it for the Nigerian project. Right. And Britain needed it for its own interests and uses. So Great Britain got directly involved in this civil war and in the war for independence and decided that they would do everything to make sure that Biafra did not go. Wow. And this everything meant directly funding genocide of the people of Biafra. This is what happened. This is the historical record. I'm not saying anything that's in doubt or in uh, question, right? Yeah. Even when it was happening during this period of 1967 to 1970, the BBC themselves were <laughs> producing documentaries, decrying it covering all the protests that were happening wow. in Great Britain. Wow, this is recent. Yeah, this is very recent. My sister, for example, is turning 60 this month. And my sister was alive at that time. She was like five, six. Right. My other brother was alive at the time, and my second brother was in my mother's belly. She was pregnant during this time, mm. running from village to village to escape the bombs that wow. they were throwing at Villagers. So when we tell you that 3 million people, some people have said up to 5 million, 6 million, or some people quote low, so the sort of average agreed upon number that you really cannot contest is about 3 million. When you think of a Holocaust, right. this is a Holocaust. Absolutely. Now, the Holocaust that we're, we typically were most familiar with is the most famous one against the Jewish people. Yes. Where they, you know, 6 million of them were massacred. Absolutely. So at the most sort of conservative estimation, they did half of us, right. half that number. Civilians, these are non-combatants, and more than a million children alone starved. Wow. Mm. The British paid for that. And Queen Elizabeth II was ruler. She was monarch at that time. This was the government that she was supervising. Now, I don't by this notion that she was just a statue, if you will. I was going to ask you that question. Or a, a decorative plant. Right. Or, you know, some kind of, uh, I don't know, tchotchka sitting on the shelf. Right. This was a ruler. This was someone, the very crown that she had on her head signifying the fact that she's a monarch was made from plunder. Right. Diamonds. Blood diamonds. Absolutely. Mm. So the throne that she's sitting on is a throne of blood. So you cannot say that she was just this little old lady or this figurehead that really had nothing to do with anything and it was just the British government that were making their deals and you know governing however they would without relating it directly to her because she directly benefited her very position as a monarch. The palace that she lived in, the opulence, the obscene levels of wealth that she enjoyed... Absolutely. We're all paid for by our blood. Mm. Mm. And I don't say this figuratively. Right. And I don't say this as something that, oh, this long remote past, let's say, of human enslavement, which on my mother's side, she's from Trinidad, my ancestors over there were enslaved by the British. Mm. I'm talking about recent living memory of people still alive today. Her money, her government funded our slaughter. And people expected me to, to be calm or to be, <laughs> I, I don't know what they expected. Right, right, right. When the person who literally paid money for bombs and guns and military Absolutely. supplies to come and massacre your people is dying. Right. You're not supposed to dance. 
what's the reaction to that? You know, I remember when um, we found out that Osama bin Laden was killed and Americans celebrated, Mm -hmm. right, because they held him responsible for 9-11, which just passed, and that terror that occurred in those 3,000 or so people that, that, that died. Yeah. And it's like, but when it's our terror, when it's our pain, when it's our loss as black and brown people, and we particularly when we express it in a way that challenges, you know, white supremacy, um, the white supremacy dominant narrative and this, you know, kind of almost like Disneying uh, idea that people had of a queen, um, then all of a sudden it's like we... We're always told to be civil, to be calm, to be peaceful as black and brown people. And so, but when it's somebody that you feel harmed America, you can dance, you can celebrate, you can take Absolutely. out your flags. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's held up. You can have, a, I mean, you know, lynchings were celebratory things in the history of the United States of America where they would. To have a parade and party and... And take children. Right. An entire family would go and enjoy the spectacle of murdering black people. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So my last question is, you know, um, a support petition has been produced. Yeah. Um, Four or 5,000 people have signed this petition. So when you see that support, um, just how does that... How do you feel in that moment? (sighs) It, it felt so good, right? Especially since I, I was locked out of Twitter, right. you know, battling this suspension um, and having my account, you know, temporarily uh, suspended. Um, and just seeing the outpouring of support from people who may or may not have agreed with how I expressed my pain, but certainly believed that I had a right to do it. Absolutely. In however I did it. And that was so important to me. And it was wonderful to see that because not only that letter with, you know, you know, four thousand, five thousand signatures yeah. um of was like fellow academics. Of academics, journalists, students. Exactly. People around people in this country, in the United States, and around the world. And it wasn't just academics, it was professionals, it was right. community members, students, you know. All sorts of people were there saying, we got your back. Absolutely. Now, once again, they were not endorsing what I did or the words that I use, but they were endorsing my right to speak my truth and to speak my pain and not be terrorized and abused and violently targeted for it. Hmm. When Jeff Bezos put that, target on my back absolutely. and then in addition to that letter there was also a letter from my colleagues at my university other faculty staff other employees with more than 100 names on that letter as well and then another letter from students wow at Carnegie Mellon who filled last time I looked like eight pages of signatures and not even on a list form in like block text wow. one wow. after the other thick beautiful and even on campus they straight spray painted on sort of the main quad there are these uh there's this wall this white wall where they spray painted r.i.p colonialism on one side and on the other side let her speak mm. these were carnegie mellon students who did that so when I saw all of that, the, the, the outpouring of support from the broader academic community and, in general, people outside of my institution, along with my colleagues at my institution and the students that I serve at this institution, I cannot, and I'm you know, a words person, words are my business, I'm a linguist, I cannot even find the words to tell you just how thankful and grateful and joyful mm. I felt. Beautiful. In such days of pain, mm. right? Because I'm a human being. I act tough, right? 
but you can only take so much abuse. True. So in all of that pain, to get this kind of support, I realize I have people. Absolutely. Mm. I have people. Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm. And that includes us at One Hood. <sighs> yes, sir. Well, indeed. you got us, too. Um, beautiful. Beautiful. That was deep. That was intense. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, this, this speaks to the volume about, like, how these ripples effects are felt across the globe when, it, when you talk about the monarchy. Like, not everybody is going to react favorably to the crown. And this is a lesson to people. It should be a lesson to people Absolutely. globally that the people of the global majority have the one have been the ones that have been forced into subjugation, been Absolutely. the one forced into oppression, been right. the ones who have felt the tyranny of the crown <clears throat> firsthand. And, right? and, and told, like... To just like suck it up and just right. deal with yeah. it, right? Yeah, because yeah. because of be all, happy because you we got, got the East India uh, we got the East India Trading Company, right? We because we have a uh, a gold standard because right. we have English as this lingua franca spoken around the world. We because we have all these things that fall under the umbrella of the crown that quote unquote benefit the world. We're supposed to be quiet and just accept it right. because they civilize the savage, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And these these are things that we're supposed to be yeah. placated with. And I, I have to also say that my my quarrel is not with the British people. Right. The British people are subject to her rule uh-huh. as Absolutely. well. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> you know, and, my, and <laughs> there is no quarrel with the British people. They are subjects. They you know, they they, they didn't they don't elect her. This, this is something that's extrapolated. Right. And I have a lot to say about this. Like I have so much to say about this. In the West, patriotism equals prejudice. Right. You look at what people talk about patriotism is in the States. You wave around a flag. That's a symbol of violence for a lot of people. 100%. In England, it's no different. In Canada, it's no different. Like, you wave around the Union Jack. You wave around the Maple Leaf. Indigenous people suffered at the hands of of erecting that flag on soil. Absolutely. Right? The Irish, who are white people, weren't considered human by the crown. Right? And and these these are things. this, this, This is what I'm saying. Like... I have yet to see, and I, maybe it is, I don't know, You maybe you can tell me. I have yet to see the conversation where people are backlashing and, and slandering the, the Irish people for speaking out against the Queen. Has anybody? Has it come up I, online I mean, at all? Not, I mean, I think I haven't seen it. I mean, I, I saw like, you know, but I'm again, I'm not on Irish Twitter. I'm on black Twitter. So I right. saw and, and that's another the thing. response of black Twitter. And, I, you know, just speaking to what you said, I learned a lot. I didn't know like the word loot is an Indian word. Mm. Pajama. Yeah. yeah. That, Cumberbund. Yeah. Right. Veranda. Yeah, yeah. But, but but that like, it was like attributed to the fact that they took so many diamonds ah. from India. They looted. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and so I think I, you know, of course I laughed, you know, when you had mentioned um, what you said about um, uh, Prince Harry. Um, it reminded <laughs> me of the tweet um, uh, that somebody had said about the uh, queen, like never having to pay rent. Yeah, and mm-hmm. like you know, basically was just like you're just you just you're just living off vibes, right? You know what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then they dragged me for calling him jobless. Yeah, right? They said <laughs> can't, this was the tweet. Can't stop thinking about how that lady lived nearly a hundred years, never had a job, never paid rent, just lived off public dollars, stolen wealth, and vibes. <laughs> We've never seen anything like her. She just might be the greatest grifting parasite the oh, world shit. has ever seen. And it's like when you, but again, it's like part of what makes social media dope is that people who like, uh, you know, if there was no social media, all we would see was mainstream media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This kind of celebration of mourning, we wouldn't hear the other side. And somebody like me who Knew a little bit, but I didn't know about Biafra. Like, I didn't know about these things. So I do, I, again, I have 50 more million questions, but I do want to pass it to Treble and Miracle um, as well to kind of to kind of hop into the conversation. So I don't have a question. I have more of a statement. And my statement is about how your specific case, especially with Jeff Bezos j- jumping into the conversation, but not criticizing the Irish celebration of the death of the queen right goes to show it's it like it's like another piece of evidence 
for the fact that black women are the most disenfranchised people in this country. Right. He felt it easier to come at you than it would be to come at the Irish people literally dancing yeah. on social media right. to the occasion. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's a... My partner, while all this was happening, she would read tweets to me sometimes or let mm-hmm. me know what was going on. Like, I didn't have access to my, you know, to it myself. Yeah. But she would kind of narrate things or send me screenshots, etc. cetera. And um, another way in which I knew I had people were Nigerians mm. and African-Americans and other Africans and, you know, all types of people were waging Twitter wars <laughs> as well. Absolutely. Behind this 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 case. Yes. Mm. So that in addition to those letters of support, I also saw like real material supports, even my trolls. <laughs> you know, like, cuz I'm always getting into it with, you know, uh, arguing about misogyny, for example, right. with mm-hmm. Nigerian men um and sometimes African American men. You may remember me from the tweet um, <clears throat> the misogyny, you know, struggle right. has made mm-hmm. me like some firm enemies and trolls, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and even those joined up to go around to be there as soldiers, if you will, mm-hmm. underneath whoever was coming to say, and to how did they do it? Not by, you know, abusing. But by facts, they would post links, they would post videos, and saying, this is the information you are lacking to understand where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. And we agree with her because we share this story as well. Mm. Alaibo. Alaibo is the the name of, like, it's the Igbo name for, like, our land. Uh, You know, ala meaning, like, our mother's breast, kind of. This is Mm. our our turf. And uh, Igbo land, like... Came hard because this was our story mm-hmm. and this was our collective pain. Mm-hmm. And I was talking about it. Beautiful. And, but that was, you know, African Americans as well. Like mm-hmm. black Twitter for me is not just African Americans. Black Twitter for me is also, you know, just right. black people in, black general, people in general on Twitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the African American subsection of black Twitter was also like riding hard, taking huge hits as well, especially the outspoken Black women, the, the feminists who Absolutely. came, right? So I was hearing this, like I wasn't seeing it, but hearing it kind of vicariously and also feeling that there was a lot of support in the letters, but a lot of support sort of in, you know, on ground as well, mm. where these battles were happening on Twitter, on Facebook and elsewhere. I, I do find it fascinating that you engage, because um, I don't like, to pe- I don't think people... People probably just engage you not knowing that you're a professor of, like, applied linguistics. Um, But what I wanted to say is, you know, here in Pittsburgh, this was deemed one of the worst cities for black women um, to live. And for me, the legacy of the crown is that statistic is that anti-black, they globalized anti-blackness. So when people talk about, like, why pick these black women, it's because the crown helped through media um, in their campaigns to say, like, black people did not matter, whether it was here in America or or in, in the African continent or in the wider diaspora, mm-hmm. is that, like, black pain, black people do not matter. Absolutely. And so if you want to build up your brand, you dog out black people. That's it. I mean, look at how their media treat Megan, right? Mm-hmm. Megan Markle. Absolutely. And the viciousness they reserve for her. You know, and she's she talks about how the fact that her, you know, her heritage and her appearance as a light skinned biracial, you know, person um, had before shielded her from a lot of this. But she didn't really hit that racism, that racism. Till she encountered the British Mm. press. Absolutely. And my goodness, they gave it to her. They made her that target, you know, because they, and it, it didn't even fit sort of, you know, you know, they were guessing about how dark her child would be and all kinds of things. They were painting her exactly as you described, that this disposable creature, but not just disposable, worthless, and on top of it, vile as well, blamed everything on her. This is, she was a stand-in. For their misogynoir, their overall hatred, 
of black women in general. And um, I may be wrong, but I feel I know Stormy's have talked about, you know, how racist Britain was. And the, and, and I'm right in the soccer. That's the one they were throwing the um, yeah. bananas, bananas. You know, yeah. so UK has this you know legacy of the hooligan and, culture of you know, football, yeah. Yeah. of the anti-blackness. Mm. But you talked about your partner and I just wanted to like. How much you big up black love and like show black love. <laughs> and the cool thing about your Twitter is in you know, the meetups, the, the matchmaking. Yes. And so it's not like all like negative. And so I, I always say like sometimes fighting white supremacy. Yeah. We have to build these communities and you've mm-hmm. been able to build a lot of community, you know, on social media. Can you talk a little bit about that? Definitely. Um, I'm a very strategic tweeter. Now, of course, that tweet, <laughs> the queen, and that was an emotional outburst. That was not planned. That was not strategic. Um, typically, I'm very purposeful about you know certain content, certain rotations, thinking about certain audiences. Uh, also, thinking about the times when I'm tweeting. Like I know prime time for Nigerians. I know prime time for the U.S. and, and things like that. Um, so one thing that I purposefully and you recognize it because that's exactly what I'm doing is I literally focus on elevating and highlighting. Black love, black love for self, for us, because, you know, we all we got black love in general for one another, black beauty, black brilliance. Just like Issa Rae said, I'm rooting for everybody black. I'm rooting for everything black Mm -hmm. and Pan-African at that because my black or my concept of black is not just limited to one type of black, right? Mm-hmm. And I strategically do that. I strategically try to highlight a pan-African inclusive blackness. I strategically try to highlight and praise and shower all kinds of love on black women. You may be familiar with how I always say fine aunties. I, I'm a connoisseur of fine aunties. I love fine aunties, right? And who is a fine auntie? Fine auntie is... A woman generally, right? A black woman specifically, but I think any woman can be a fine auntie. But the ones that I usually have in mind are black women over 35. Because there's also the whole idea that once you reach a certain age as a woman, that you you lose your appeal, your beauty, you somehow don't fuck anymore, and you're just not about anything, you know, beautiful or sexual or sexy or hot or anything like that. So I very strategically big up fine aunties, I big up big women, right, fleshy, curvaceous, luscious women, right, just to, well, number one, you know, talk about shit I like, (laughs) and number two, show that we are worthwhile, we are, we're wonderful, why wouldn't you envy and, and love us, look how gorgeous we are, right, so, yeah, it's very, very intentional. And my matchmaking is um, people get mad because I've done these threads for everybody except straight men. <laughs> but it's coming. <laughs> they have their own. They have their own. They have their own tweets. They're good. They're good. <laughs> and we're going to, um, so, you know, have one of your articles be our white pages. But I did have one more question before we close out um, because I saw – in the wake of, you know, uh, Queen Elizabeth passing and this conversation around colonialism, yeah, um, a call for reparations, right? I think Jamaicans yeah. mm-hmm. were saying, like, you know, instead of having more, like, we need reparations. Absolutely. Um, you, you spoke, you know, you taught us about this very recent history yeah. uh, around Biafra. Is there a movement or calls for some type of reparation? Because, you know, we've seen... Reparations happen mm-hmm. uh, with with the uh, the Holocaust of Jewish people, Absolutely. deservedly so. You know, I, I you know you mentioned you know I'm part of the National African Americans Reparation Commission that was started by uh, Dr. Ron Daniels. Absolutely. First of all, the Queen never once apologized. She never once opened her mouth to say sorry. Everybody, the history records know what happened and what was done in her name right. and for her crown. Not just to the people of Biafra, but you talked about the Kenyans, you know, the Indians, the indigenous people, right? You know, Native Americans. So it's just never once 
have they taken responsibility and just said sorry? So what I am advocating for and what a lot of people people are advocating for, number one is to just recognize what you did mm. and say sorry. And then we can move on to conversations about what does reparations look like? It could look like leaving the oil alone. Right. It could look like, you know, actual payments and repayments, you know, of the compensating the three million lives that were lost. Right. I don't know. We haven't even gotten that far yet because we can't even get them to admit the shit they did. Wow. Man. And how does that feel as a language professor? I didn't know. It's so, like, you know, it could all be so simple. Yeah. And then just that refusal. They continue to dehumanize us. That's what it feels like. We are not even human enough to them to sit down with them as equals and say, this is what you did to us. And they recognize it and say, yes, this is what we did. And we're sorry. Even though it's open record, the fact that they never open their mouth and sit down with us and say it shows that they continue to view us as less than and undeserving of the common acknowledge of our humanity and our dignity to say, yes, we harmed you, and we're sorry. Wow. Powerful, uh, a powerful way to end. And that's mm-hmm. why we call it This Week in White Supremacy. Absolutely. Yes. Um, this, this, was, this was a perfect uh, synopsis of the theme of this show. And um, the article we're going to share... Um, as our white pages is a, a recent um, article um, um, Dr. Anya just wrote critical race pedagogy for more effective and inclusive world language teaching um, asking folks to you, you said you liberated this article from behind I did the it paywall. was behind the paywall and I used money from my research funds to pay the publisher to not put a paywall on it because I believe that the teachers that I work for and I write for, uh, who benefit from my work and who I also benefit from the work they're doing because they provide me with material for scholarship and Absolutely. investigation. I believe that they should have free access to the results of the work I do for them and with them. Well, we, we greatly appreciate you doing that and appreciate you taking the time. I, I know you're busy. I know you've been kind of bombarded with media requests that you yeah. would take the time to come and sit with us and um, be so passionate, so vulnerable yeah. um, and so open about this journey um, and we're thankful to have this relationship with you now and looking yes. forward to continue to support the incredible work uh, that you're doing at, at Car- Carnegie Mellon University Thank you. Um, and onwards and upwards. Um, I'm in the Modern Languages Department in the Second Language Acquisition Program. Absolutely. Mm. All right. Um, any closing thoughts? And I know we've got, we got yes. some announcements. Trouble? Um, I just want to say I am extremely grateful for you sitting down and talking with us because you taught me a lot just by listening to everything that you were saying and you provided not only us but our viewers with the context yeah. that is needed to understand why there's a mixed reaction to the death of the queen. So thank you. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me here, for Absolutely. hosting me, and thank you for you know, being my entryway into Black Pittsburgh. Oh, where wow, I want to dwell. Oh, that means two things. Let's get it. Come on, let's go. That I means two things. BlackPittsburgh.com. Yeah, yeah yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know it's a lot, so I really appreciate you thank trusting you. us, and thank you so yeah. much to your partner as well. Um, just love y'all. Just I took the you. time to come here, and I do get a lot of requests, but because you are black people working for us, mm-hmm. and I, I want to be a part of this community and what you're doing. So thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. Um Saeed, you have a, a, no, an announcement you'd like to make, too? Yeah, man. Friday. Revolutionary but gorgeous on all digital streaming platforms. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rap album of the year. I said it. Okay, okay. Let's get it. Right. It's birthday. Hey. Right. And it's, yeah, and it's also my birthday on Friday. And it, it, it may be our final Liberty Green. Um, we're we're, we're going to see if... Um, uh, Rap so, album of the year, revolutionary but gorgeous. <laughs> Friday, all this is Friday, platform. Liberty Green. We'll be we at Liberty Green still Park, adopting the community, yes. trying to do pop up parties to Absolutely. stop mm-hmm. violence. So come out to Liberty Green Park, seven to nine. Be with the community, get Absolutely. some free food, support so, the baby. Yes, and then Saturday. Um, well, actually, this weekend is also the breakout conference. 
Uh, we'll be hosting the breakout conference on Saturday. That's pretty cool. So there'll be people coming in from all over the country to I, kind of build I, I, with I need, us. I need like the, the, the album cover, like right here. Anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> John. Yeah. Yeah. Tell John that. Yeah. Tell John that. <laughs> and, um, we just, um, uh, got the flyer back, you know, um, September 24th. Um, our people power and politics event will be featuring David Banner, um, looking forward to having him come in. We're also doing this in partnership with Kingsley Association with AR3, uh, with Reach. Um, and so, um, we're going to have a three on three basketball tournament. We're going to have a giveaway some social status giveaways. We're going to have, um, uh, part like information on how to get your part in, uh, the marijuana policy that was just released from the governor's office, expungements. Mm. Um, so it's going to be, you know, we're trying to do it. Big, not just to ask the community what to do for us, but what we're going to be doing with the community. And then you want to talk about Sunday, Miracle? Yes. Every time I try to book a flight somewhere, (laughs) (laughs) y'all try to plan stuff. Uh, But yes, for our 100 Power, which is our 501c4, from uh, 1030 to 1230 on Sunday, we'll be at Highland Park doing an educational outreach with uh, Ben the Ark and Unite PA to go canvassing. Um, for the uh, November 8th general election. So you can join us. And if you go to the 51C4 page, One Head Power, you'll find some information about that. But you have until October 24th to register to vote here mm-hmm. in Pennsylvania. Um, I have one more announcement. Um, next Friday, yes. this feature is Black here at the Black Box. Absolutely. It's free to the public. Um, we'll drop the registration link in the uh, in the chat. You can also find a registration link in my and One Hood Media's link in bio. Um, there's going to be free food. There's going to be art that you could purchase. There's going to be performances. There's going to be interactive art. It's going to be an amazing time. Yeah. And as we wrap up, one, I think let's we'll lift up Chris Caba. Um, you know, he was the black man who was murdered by police in London, mm. you know, his his protest has kind of been drowned out due to the death of the queen, but lifting, um, lifting him and his family up as well. We also want to give our love, support, and condolences to the family of P&B Rock, you know, mm-hmm. our yeah. Philly brother and artist. Um, just a lot going on, so just please make sure you're loving on each other with consent, you know, showing up for people, and just let, let's get through this year, y'all. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So till next time, this has been it's kind of this week in black excellence because we yes. had some black excellence yeah, come yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to have to switch it up. It's black excellence this time. So yeah, we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Peace. One hood, y'all. Take care. My hair popping. We the laws. You can't stop us. Uh.